This week, I'm joined by the head of our property management team, Anisha Sagar. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Good. Okay, so in this pod, we're going to quickly get to know Anisha a little bit, hear a little bit about her story in Dubai, and then most pressingly, we're going to talk about property management, rent rises, because it's a huge, very whether you're interesting. A, yeah, a landlord or a tenant at the moment, it's a and it has been for a while now, a hot yeah. topic in the market. So how are we seeing it impacts the property management side of things? So direct debit is a very welcomed by a lot of our landlords. Um, and it's incredible, I think, because it's linking to our Ajari system. So direct debits is linked directly to the Ajari. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Taking Care of Business. This week, I'm joined by the head of our property management team, Anisha Sagar. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Good. Okay, so in this pod, we're going to quickly get to know Anisha a little bit, hear a little bit about her story in Dubai, and then most pressingly, we're going to talk about property management, why it's needed, what developments are happening in the market, etc., etc. So I'm going to mix things up to start off with. I've got three icebreaker questions oh, wow. to ask you oh my god <laughs> so now that's simple what's okay. your coffee order americano good milk or no milk no milk nice no nonsense yeah no nonsense who is your favorite cartoon character oh that's hard tom and jerry that's two <laughs> well <laughs> tom tom from tom and jerry <laughs> uh what do you listen to in the car or oh, what did you listen to in the car this morning on your way to work Nothing. Just, just silence. Yeah, silence. That's parent life, isn't it? Just yes, <laughs> really parent life. Yeah. I just wanted pure silence. Good. And I'm happy with that. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so after the icebreakers, can you just tell us all a little bit about your journey in Dubai and what it is you do within Allsop and Allsop? Okay, um, so I came to Dubai in 2015, um, came from a legal background in the UK, worked in property as well came to Dubai as a lettings consultant. Thank you to the HR director, Joe Parker. <laughs> I said I'll give her a little mention. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I came here as a lettings consultant, but realized very quickly that that's not what I wanted to do. Um, and there was an opportunity that came up in property management. At that time, there was only three people in the team. So it was very, very small. Um, and. I started to develop and learn about property management in Dubai. It was a bit of a culture shock to me because it was, it was very different to the UK. It's very, it's still, it was very behind at the time. Um, and I started to kind of develop within that role um, with property management. Okay, so that's the professional answer. Tell me a <laughs> bit more about the answer you gave off camera about getting your nails done every two weeks and nearly having to move home. Yeah, so so the reality is I came here with a certain amount of money from my dad. He gave me the chance to come here. I had a bad situation that happened in the UK. So Joe had given me almost like a lifeline and I came out here. I worked as a lessons consultant and a little bit of money, went into property management, I didn't earn that much at that time. And what I was doing is I was going out every week and getting my nails done and I was spending 400 dirhams. So that's a hundred pounds that I was spending. Um, I was going out to eat, I was at white every weekend. So there was no real like concept of money. And I was just in Dubai having a great time. So my dad said to me, that's it. I'm not giving any more money. You've got this much. You either make it work or come home. So I sat with Lewis um, just before I came home, went home for a weekend and he said to me something that's going to always stick with me. He said, either you can live on daddy's money and not make something of your own or you can become your own person. And that's really stuck with me to this day. Oh, it's created an animal. Yeah, oh my God. What's made me laugh is <laughs> you came and you were out doing your nails every week, going yeah. to White's every weekend. Now you drive to work in silence. Yeah, you drive to <laughs> work in silence, contrast. yeah. And it's so different because I wouldn't go and spend that money. If I took myself back, I wouldn't do what I did. So I came back from holiday and decided that I'm gonna become the expert in what I do. So I'd come to work, I'd be here till 10 o'clock. I'd come in on a Friday morning, a Saturday morning, and I had my best month. 
I remember I hit my personal best that month. The next month I hit my personal best and it just almost continues. And I remember I knew nothing about property management in Dubai. So I knew about property management in the UK, but I didn't know anything here. So I decided in my mindset that I wasn't going to live, you know, being these privileged girls and living off my dad's money or whatever. I wanted to be something and I wanted to make something. And I'd always come from a very like salesy background. Um, my dad has been in property his whole life. So I wanted to prove to him that I could also do something for myself. So I was really dedicated. I did my hours till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock until I would get a deal. I'd do my calls. I wouldn't leave the office until, until I did my 150 calls, come in on a Friday morning, Saturday morning. And that's really paid off. I wouldn't do, wouldn't be where I am if I hadn't put that work in. Good. So to pick up on something you said a moment ago, in the early days, you saw something in property management in Dubai yes. that wasn't quite right or you, you thought could be done better. Yeah. What was that? So there was no processes. Everyone was almost doing property management, very old school how my dad does, still to this day. And he's just brought into systems by WhatsApp, by call, by email. There was no processes in place. Um, there was, I remember I used to go to Diva and it was all, there was a lot of paper. I'd sit in the Diva office for three hours and there was no digital transformation then. There was no online Diva accounts at Jari. You'd have to physically go to the office. And within the property management department, there was no real start to end process. And I realized actually there needs to be processes. How are we going to service our clients? Two, Dubai's moving very quickly. Um, and things all of a sudden started going online, but we weren't still matching to where we were with that. So there was no systems in place. It was very old school how, you know, maybe a one man band would look after the properties at that time. And there was good people, but we just not had put the processes in place. Wow. So all sap and all sap were a disaster at property management. I don't think it's a disaster. No, 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 no. I don't think a disaster. Oh my God, that's so bad. <laughs> I just mean generally in Dubai. I think, you know, everything, Dubai is a developing com country and it's so beautiful because they are so quick with developing what they do. And we started bringing, using the systems they were bringing in and marrying them up to be make better processes for our clients. Good. So to fast forward, and we will, we'll skip back a few yeah, steps yeah. afterwards, but to fast forward to where we are today. Tell us a little bit about what the how the profile looks, who we service. So we now have a corporate department and a non-corporate department. We have over 3,000 units, which we started with very little. Um, 3,000 in the non-corporate side? Yes. Um, and then we have many on, uh, we have a large number of portfolio clients on the corporate side. So we have a big portfolio, which we didn't have all those years ago. We have a team of over 30. We have dedicated teams to our non-corporate and corporate. We have dedicated inventory clerks. We have dedicated tenancy renewal coordinators. So we have looked at every part of the property management process and put in people to service those roles to make sure our clients are serviced much better. So the department's really, it's quite beautiful to see because we've gone from having three people to now over 30 and that structure has really grown and progressed with one how Dubai's progressing but two how our company's progressing as well. So just to explain to everyone what's the difference or between the residential side and the corporate side like who what the kind of people we're dealing with what kind of services yeah. they're looking for? So with the corporate side we deal with banks um, corporate clients which have a multiple number of buildings, warehouses, labour camps, and then the non-corporate, which is the residential side, it's more individual owners. They may have multiple units, but it's trying to give them the dedicated service that they need, which is catered to them. And then for the corporate side, we have teams which are catered to their needs and requirements as well. It is crazy. I remember from, um, from my time in the company then in yeah. this role, and like you say, we went from managing studios and now you come to me and says oh we've just taken a labor camp on in Omar Queen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's crazy like I don't even know how we've gone from zero to a hundred but it's it's amazing to see. So for the residential owners what's the main benefits of having property management? 
taking the stress and taking the hassle. I own a property and so do you in, in Dubai. And just that hassle of not having to, you know, week calls on the weekend for maintenance, having someone take away and that stress away from you and things are managed by an independent party. I think that's really important because you're kind of removing yourself, but you're still reaping the benefits of, of your investment that you've made. Um, not getting calls on the weekend. Yeah, that's a good one. And I always yeah. think it's a service as well that people appreciate more when they have it, when things go wrong. Yeah, they do. I think they don't realise until something goes wrong how useful it is to have a professional who is in place, who understands what's happening and can kind of resolve the issue much quicker than you may be able to because they'll be able to find a better solution. And on the corporate side? On the corporate side, what's the benefit? We have a dedicated team, we understand the process and we really put in the the effort to understand what the client needs and tailor it to them. And it is taking that stress. We've seen with for a lot of cor- corporate clients that they hadn't, in- the expenses were so high and there was no real focus or no understanding of how they were spending their money and they're almost approving everything. So we've kind of, streamline things for them make it better make you know reduce the expenses increase their occupancy and we've really really looked at their portfolio a lot of our corporate clients want to sell eventually and we make those buildings warehouses labor camps more attractive to be to be sold to an investor so we really look at the whole whole project and structure of the way it is can you give us an example because i know you've got them of taking over a building in terms of percentages, how much we've reduced the cost, an operational cost? Yep, so for one of our clients, we've reduced the operational cost by 15% in the first year. And for me, that's massive because we've really looked at every single one of their costs and looked at the way we can use our internal teams, our home maintenance, we have our own home maintenance team, and how we can make it better for them in reducing their costs. We've also looked at their contracts and what they're putting into their tenancy contracts for the tenants. Um, for those same clients, we've increased the occupancy up to 89 to 95%. So that's from 70 to 80%. We're, in the first year, we've already looked to increase occupancy. So to pick up on one point, because I think it's really relevant to make, yeah. The advantages that I see for property management with Allsop and Allsop is the home maintenance team and the lettings team because yeah. it is a one-stop shop of, okay, we'll not only manage it, but we have the people here to fix any issues yeah. as they arise. We control the maintenance team, so it's not we're not calling the local guy and hoping he goes and does a good yeah. job. But then also we've got one of the best, I would biasly say the best, yeah. but definitely one of the best letting teams in the whole of Dubai. Yeah. So the occup- we can ensure that the occupancy rates are high. And again, we control we control that element of things. Okay. So time time is already pushing on. So there's two okay. big two big topics yes. I want to cover. Rent rises, because it's a huge Very whether you're interesting. A, yeah, a landlord or a tenant at the moment. It's a and it has been for a while now, a hot yeah. topic in the market. So how are we seeing it impact the property management side of things? Um, I think it's really impacting because we are seeing tenants who are now having to either downsize, some are upsizing, but a lot of tenants are having to downsize or relook at their options. The rents have gone up, so that's reflective of you know landlords wanting to do rental valuations and relook at their rent, and that is an option. Um, there's obviously options to tenants so of having a look at how they can compromise with the landlord. But if they were to move out, we are advising a lot of tenants that actually it may be cheaper to stay where you are and come up with an agreement with your landlord. So there's a lot of buzz in the market about the rental valuations, rent increases, and I think it's it it was gonna come. And I feel I feel over the years, you know, we, we were in almost COVID rental prices. So tenants are now starting to readjust of where they're looking. And I'm seeing a lot of tenants actually moving further out. So, you know, Demac Hills 2, Town Square, um, Dubai South, those um, the really nice communities, which you wouldn't have seen before, but tenants are starting to move out to those areas because they look at re-looking at their options because it is so high and more landlords are trying to negotiate. And we're seeing that from the property management side as well. So fine balancing that, isn't it yeah. really? Because landlords, they have made an investment. They yeah. did suffer through COVID with lower yeah, rents. Yeah, they did. 
they're, they're kind of seen as the bad guys, but the reality is they're trying to just get a market rent and that they'll have bills and debts yeah. and, and what have you to pay. But then obviously from a tenant side, it, it is frightening some of the, the rises that are going up in just a 12 month period. So Yeah, and I think with some landlords, the interest rates have increased as well. So Correct, yeah. the mortgages have increased as well. So I think, yeah, you're right, there is a balancing act, but also tenants have to see the other side as well, that landlords are also paying a mortgage, you know, not this may be their first or second investment. Not everyone's just bought this for cash. And I think there's that kind of perception from tenants that, you know, because a landlord has an investment, that there could be, you know, that they that they have the money. But a lot of people, the interest rates have a rise. So there is a full effect on the market. Talking about tenants, do, do tenants like a managed property? Yes, they do. I think it's a very European way. So when I was in the UK, and maybe you'll be the same, a lot of that, that was kind of the It's option. a standard property It's a management. standard, it's yeah. a, a property managed. So for a lot of our European clients, one, their landlords might be overseas. So if you're in Australia or you're in America, you're not going to be able to contact your landlord if you have a maintenance issue. So it kind of gives them a line of communication. We also have something called Happy Tenant. So that allows tenants to, to submit the service request at any time of the day, and then one of our team will pick up. So they have a line of communication where there is someone that they can talk to at the other end of the line. Good. Okay, coming on to what's been all over the news since yeah. I think February, My direct debits. <laughs> yeah. How are we getting on with that at the moment? So this is incredible. And this says everything about Dubai, I think, you know, from bringing Diva online to Ajari online to everything else that we see in terms of digital transformation, direct debits w is come a long way because if you, if you look at the UK, every, everyone in the UK pays by direct debits or bank transfers. They don't pay by checks. When I came here, it was almost like a shock to my system that we all paid in checks. I think checks. for most people feel the same, yeah. yeah. And you'd have to get a checkbook and then you'd have to write and then if your signature's wrong. So direct debits is a very welcomed by a lot of our landlords. Um, and it's incredible, I think, because it's linking to our Ajari system. So direct debits is linked directly to the Ajari. And then it goes to central banks to get approved and it goes to their banks to get approved as well. So it's such a welcome change and you can see how D Dubai is developing that they're bringing in this change as well. So we've had the announcements, but are people today now paying their rent via direct debit? Yep, so we've started making it compulsory for all of our tenants. So all of our tenants now have to take the direct debit option and they have a schedule of payments and that's how they will pay their, their rent. So it's, or maybe we've done about we introduced it three weeks ago, so we've done about 40 to 50 already, but all of our tenants who are renewing with us or taking new leases on our managed properties are now doing direct debits. Um, well, they must be happy to as well, because like yeah. you say, nobody likes a checkbook. And I think one of the big problems is, let's say if a landlord is overseas and the check is in their name, someone has to take a physical authorization letter to the bank to get that check back. And a tenant's not going to pay their rent until that check is back. So that whole process could take 10 to 15 days. Whereas with this, you eliminate the need for checks or going to take that trip to the bank. Or a lot of tenants, they would have a regular signatures. We can see everything from the dashboard of what's going on with their check, if it's bounced, if they've got insufficient funds, what's going on with their direct debit. So it's a very smart system. Perfect. As usual on these podcasts, I've been waved at by the guys that the, the time is <laughs> yeah, up, sorry. unfortunately. But there's so much information there. So what I'd say to anyone watching is, whether it's direct debits, rent rises, property management, the benefits, whether it's residential, uh, corporate client, etc., yeah. just get in touch with us, speak to Anisha. She'd be more than happy to run through details on anything with you. So drop us a note in the comments, as always. If you can follow and share the podcast, it'd be very much appreciated. That's it, I think. Thank, Thank you very you, much okay. for joining us. Thank, Thank you for you. watching, guys. See you, you next time. See you.